All right, so we are joined all the way from Oakland, California, out there in the Bay Area by my friend, the incomparable Cheryl Grant, president of Cheryl Grant Enterprises. Um, unbelievable entrepreneur, unbelievable speaker, um, and her resume speaks for itself. We're so glad for you to join us today. We've got a room full here with us at Velma Jackson High School. I've actually got the cheerleaders in here with me today, too, so that's kind of cool. Hey! And uh, we're reporting this for our friends at Madison Central High School, Ridgeland High School, and Germantown High School, and our YouTube channel. Um, and um, I'll let you just start because you had an unbelievable career in corporate America. You hit the glass ceiling and you finally said one day, I'm going to do something else. Well, first and foremost, happy Women's Month, everybody. Hey, cheerleaders. How are you doing? You'll feel some of my rah-rah spirit because I'm all about uplifting, encouraging, and inspiring. I want to say it is such an honor to be here today, to, to be able to speak into you. And what I want to do most is leave you with the inspiration that you can truly be, do, and have what you want in life. But it all starts here. It all starts with your thoughts and your thoughts become words and your words become action. So so let this penetrate into your spirit in a way that propels you to be your most amazing self. And so I'm going to tell a little bit about myself. Is that okay, Greg? Yeah, we want to hear it. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, I'm the mother of two amazing sons. My oldest son is 35. My baby is 30. Um, both are college graduates. My youngest graduated from um, Cal Berkeley, All-American. They both played sports, basketball, and John Tay did track. I have a beautiful granddaughter who's two years old. And my life really, when I, after becoming a mother, and that was just such a wonderful experience for me to be their mother, and they now actually work for me. Um, oh. We are a family-ran business, and I did change my name. There's some name changes, Greg. We've just recently updated to Cheryl Grant International. That's right, yeah. And so it's now SGI. And let me just start back where my humble beginnings. And I started off in corporate America. Um, and I started off as an administrative assistant. And I was told, you know, you're an admin. All you can ever really be is an admin. I didn't have a college degree at the time. I didn't take the track that my friends had taken. They went to college and they got their degrees and then they went on to corporate. That wasn't my story. Um, I, um, well, I got had, had, got pregnant, had a baby, and then I went to school and I got my undergraduate um, degree in information systems while I was working and while I was a mother. And then I went on to get my master's degree and while I was working too. And so in those humble beginnings, when I was an administrative assistant, my first career, I can remember I wanted to get into sales. And I went to my manager and my manager said to me, Oh, honey, you're you're way over your 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 pay grade, your thought process. You could never be in sales. You don't have any technical background. You don't have any technical degree. And I went to work for a company called Hewlett Packard. And Hewlett Packard is now a Fortune 50 company. And most people that work for HP were engineers yeah. and they were very technical background. So the audacity of me, little old me to think that I could actually get into sales. But there was something inside of me that was greater than me than the, the voices that outside were telling me that I couldn't. And I went to the hiring manager and I'll never forget, he used to come at sales manager. The, he became the, the hiring manager. And I went into the office and I said, I really wanna get into sales. He said, do you really? And I said, yes. He said, well, you need to start aligning yourself with people who are doing the job that you want to do. Learn from them. And it's through them and that learning and building a relationship. He told me never to burn any bridges. Even though you may not need them in this time, don't burn bridges because you never know when you need to cross them again. I took those words to heart. So when people said things to me, I knew I wanted that North Star. So I'm saying to you and all this, have a North Star and don't ever allow anybody to tell you what you can do and what you can't because you don't have the technical background or you don't come from the right place or you don't have the right socioeconomics or the right people or even the right work words or anybody in your life that's feeding into you and telling that you can't, you have to believe in you. 
And that's what I did. I believed in me. And I can remember going to the manager that, so I have the hiring manager who I became friends with and I listened to him and I networked with other sales reps. I even went on ride alongs just to see what they did. I didn't ask networking. And I want to give you this tool too in this story because networking is so powerful. Your network is the people you hang around with, but your network is your net worth. So you want to aspire around people who are doing what you want to do. When you stay with people who don't think like you or want to aspire to you, they'll tend to want to keep you encapsulated. So align yourself with people like go to your teacher, seek people out that you know outside of your circle, ask him to introduce you to people, ask him to help you to bridge those gaps for where you want to go, make the introductions. And then when he does that, you have to show up and you have to take care of those relationships that he introduces you to so that you can build those relationships yourself. And I can guarantee tell you, I have yet to create a network that doesn't help attach me to something else. And I want to say to you is I'm here for you. And I'm here to support anybody who really believes in themselves and really are doing the work. My grandmother used to tell me nothing comes to a sleeper, but a dream. So if you're dreaming and you're not taking action, it's not going to help. You got to do the work. There's no such thing as an easy road. There's a fast food. I love it. Yeah, I don't eat it, but I love it. You can go there. You can get what you want very quickly and very easily. But anything ever worth having, you have to work for it. I had to work for that role. And so fast forwarding the story, I went to the hiring manager. He told me no. And I went back again. He told me no. And I went back again. And he said, you know, you're here for the third time. I'm going to give you an opportunity. And at that third opportunity, I went and I told myself, I said, if they just give me an opportunity to interview, I'm going to get the job. Well, I want you to know I aced that job. And not only did I become a sales rep, I became the number one sales rep. Not only in that category, I went on to do so many different sales roles through my corporate career, which was found in 30 years. But here goes the thing. I want you to hear me loud and clear. For every level, there's a new devil. For every level, there's a new devil. So just because you accomplish a goal and you got it, mm, you think that's the end. No, we're on a journey. And this journey that we're on is called life. And the true thing about life is it's hard. And if somebody tells you it's not, I'm going to tell you I disagree. Life is hard. However, life is what you're willing to put into it. And if you're willing to put in the work, I can guarantee you'll get the results. I'm a prime example of that. I went on to make, I was starting off making literally nothing going on to six figures. So I'm telling you, I didn't have a degree. I'm telling you, I didn't come from the right background. I'm telling you that I went into an environment that typically wouldn't hire me. As a matter of fact, Hewlett Packard is predominantly white and white males. So me being of a young black woman was like, uh, are you serious? But guess what? I believed in me and you got to believe in you because if you don't believe in you, nobody else will. You got to know that you have what it takes to get what you want and no is not an option. The only answer for you is yes. And the only person who's going to give you that yes is you. So I tell you that story because I think it's so important. I think everybody, especially with social media these days, um, and you can follow me on IG. I mean, I literally went from 10,000 followers. I think I have 150,000. On IG, I have 118,000. But I want to say to you that um, likes aren't everything. Those likes, that's not it. I mean, yeah, it's great on social media to get the likes. But really what it's about, those are stories of people wants to always show you the good side. They always want to show you the pretty side. They want to show you when they're all dressed up and their makeup's on and their hair is done and, you know, they're doing and they're living their best life and they got all the money and let me show you the money. And I want to say that's all beautiful, but I want to tell you a smoke and mirrors, baby. Yeah. That's smoke and mirrors. It's not the reality. If anybody who's attained anything of success, ask a Beyonce, she worked for that. That didn't just come to her easily. And in anybody, it doesn't matter, you name them, whoever they are, they worked for it. They had a craft and they desired a result and they put in the work. I'm no different than that. 
And we all will aspire. We all won't be Beyonce, but we can be our own Beyonce. We can be our own Beyonce by striving to get the things that you want in life. And I want to say to you, listen, I've never been that good. I meant no offense. Is your class a math class, Greg? No, it's an entrepreneurship class. Entrepreneur. Okay, so math was never my favorite subject. Okay, English was, right? But um, I want to say to you that wherever your gift is, find your gift, find your voice. What's your voice? Not your neighbor's voice. God didn't create you to be a copy of anybody. He created you to be an original. So what's your voice? And for me, let me finish this corporate story because I think it's very important for where we're actually going. And in corporate, what I kept finding is that even remember I said at every level, there's a new devil. So even though I, I, I beat the odds, I went against what everybody told me I couldn't do and I did it and I was making money and I was able to afford things I never had been able to afford in my life with my kids in private school. They had swimming pool in the back, all this stuff. Let me say this stuff. What I found is I kept hitting what most call a glass ceiling. Yeah. But for black women in corporate America, it's not a glass ceiling. It's a brick ceiling and there's a difference. Glass is penetratable. And brick is not. And for every brick, you need special tools in order to dismantle it, to take it apart, right? You need special tools. And no sooner than I would take one brick down, two more bricks would be put in its place. And then I had to take those and two more bricks. And that's exhausting. And it's exhausting to be in an environment that doesn't accept you and that doesn't appreciate you and that doesn't value you. And you're constantly trying to tell them, no, I'm good. Look at me. Look at me. Well, that comes when after a certain period of time, I had to rethink things. I had to re-strategize and say, oh my God, am I going to listen to them again? There goes that wall. Am I going to listen to them? And the cold part about it is, is that not only were there systemic brick systems, but I built brick systems in my own mind. Absolutely. So I had to break through their walls and the ones that I, the limiting thoughts that I put in my life, oh, I can't do that. I can never have, do that. I'm a loser. I can't, oh my God, why can't I do it? Oh my God, I'm not valued. I'm not appreciated. I'm going to tell you, stop that thinking that will never serve you. If you don't tell yourself anything else, your thoughts become words and your words become things. Be careful what you speak with your mouth. Because you will live and die by the tongue. That's what the Bible teaches. I'm a believer. It just is. If you're not, I'm not trying to push religion on you. I'm just trying to tell you your words have power. So speak positive things in your life. You got to tell yourself, I'm a winner. I can do it. I can, I'm capable. I have it in me to do this. I'm going to do this. I will do this. Use words of power because that's what will fuel you. And in that, I did that. I had to go on this inward journey, like, oh my God, so I'm number one. Like, you're in the top 1%. Why can't I break this glass ceiling? I, what about me is not working? So I went on an inward journey. And that inward journey, I decided to not only, I've always wanted to transform my body. And I decided to, I was going to enter a fitness competition. Now, mind you, I'm doing this at the age of 55. And I'm about to do it again, but I did this at the age of 55 and I wanted to enter a fitness competition and who at 55 would have thought that I could become Miss Olympia, but I did. And you want me to tell you how I did it? I did it by building community. I have something called the C4 matrix and I want you to write this down because it's going to be one of the things that's going to be a game changer for you in your life. The C4 matrix stands for Communication builds connection. Connection builds collaboration and collaboration builds community. I was able through my communication to connect with people and to build collaboration and to build community that helped me to go on to win Miss Olympia. Yeah, I had to do the work. I had to go to the gym. I had to eat right. I had to drink the water, but I had a nutritionist. I had a, I had a physical therapist. I had people that were um, knowledgeable in that field to help me along the way. 
And I became Miss Olympia at the age of 55. And I'm about, and you could clap wherever you are. Yeah, I said it. I'm 55. No, actually, I'm 61. <laughs> I did that at 55, but I'm about to do it again because I believe I can. And it's again about putting in the work. And I'm willing to do the work to get the result. And I know for me, that means at this stage in my life, there's certain things I can't do. I had to eliminate certain things out of my way, like my girlfriends love to eat. I can't go out and eat because my diet has to be very clean. I have to work out two and a half to three hours a day. So sometimes I want to go out and have a good time and I can't do it because I'm committed to my goal. Sometimes um, my friends, like I have my family is going to be doing this huge feast with gumbo. And guess what? I'm going to be there, but I can't partake in any of it because I have a greater goal. Yeah. What is your North Star? What is the thing that you're shooting for? What is the thing that you want better than anything else? And I think the whole preface of this conversation is all this led me to create my own company. And my company is called Cheryl Grant International. And the formula, the company that I created is based upon a framework and a methodology called FIT. FIT for me stands for faith, intuition, and tenacity. Faith, your ability to see the unseen. Your ability to see the impossible with your mind's eye. Visualize it every day. Meditate on it every day. Intuition, learning to trust yourself. Do you ever go into certain situations and you know, ooh, this is not good? Or your friends say, let's go do this. And you're like, mm, sounds like fun, but may not be the best idea. Listen to your intuition. It will never steer you wrong. And then tenacity. You got to have the will and the grit and the grind to go get it done. I teach these fundamentals about being mentally fit because this journey in life is not given to the swiftest. It's not about who's the quickest. It's about consistency. It's about consistency and being diligent over a period of time. This is not a sprint. It's a marathon. If any of you know Nipsey Hussle, 10 toes down. You got to be in it to win it. How strong are you? How bad do you want it? Remember your North Star and continue to shoot for that. Um, Greg, I could go on, but I want to make sure well, I leave time for questions. Well, well, one thing you mentioned, uh, and they hear me say this a lot. Um, the only only regrets I have in life haven't been failing. Most people will tell you that, you know, that actually I finally bet on themselves. My only regret in life is that I did not bet on myself sooner because I didn't have that tenacity. I didn't have that intuition. I didn't have that faith. And it was the exact same thing you said. I got into teaching way later than I should have. And that is my only regret. It's not that I failed at other things. It's the fact that I could have bet on myself a long time ago, and I did not. And I, they hear me say that often, and I know they get sick of it, but it's real. And, you know, it doesn't matter you know, white, black, purple, or green. The world owes you nothing. The world owes you absolutely nothing. And you're right. The world is mean and the world is cruel. But the people that have the fit, and have the fit mindset are the ones that become the conquerors. It, it, you are so spot on. Like you said, the world doesn't owe you anything, but you owe yourself everything. And the, the interesting thing about life is you'll get what you put back in, but you have to have a belief system in yourself. And I love the fact, Greg, that you said you went, you bet it on yourself. Did you know, and it's not about a black or white thing, it's about a mind thing. But I do want to say to you that we live in a world that sometimes doesn't value us as African-Americans or of people of color. Black women are the most educated in this country today. That's a fact. Google it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said it. that because they don't believe me. I say that the first year, the first day of ninth grade for these kids. And I'm like, look, this isn't an opinion. The numbers say right now in the United States, black women are the most educated portion of the population. And it's not even close. No. And. They're the most demographic, the fastest growing de demographic of entrepreneurs, outpacing and it's any not even other close. I mean, it is like twice the uh, of the next of the next group. It is literally not close. Yes, it's like you're looking at the forty-seven to fifty-seven percentile. So, what that's saying to you is that I'm going to tell you, people are leaving corporate America by the droves. 
And it's not that we're getting the funding, although I aim to try to change that. One of the things, my goal this year is to start a fund and to raise $35 million so that I can support entrepreneurs in getting to their dreams. But let me tell you, though the entrepreneurship, really think about what you want to get in. I want to challenge you. Like there's a lot of in different industry, but what are you good at? Whatever you're good at, make that. You love technology. We use it. We're the number one. African-Americans are the number one consumers of technology. We are the ones who are driving Snapchat, yet we don't own any of the properties or the royalties for Snapchat or Instagram or any of those meetings. What do you love to do? Think about it. I have a good friend that uses this um, analogy, and I love them for it. They're actually in the entertainment industry, and um, they're um, football. But one of the things they wanted to give back to the community, and they wanted to teach people, like people want to play sports. Let's say it's basketball, or if it's football. This My friend happens to be, and his name is Will Blackburn. You might know Blackman, I'm sorry. He's a former NFL player. But he said that there's so many different aspects to football. There is have you ever looked at graphic design? Whoever does the logo, that's graphic design. Do you ever look at their website? That's a whole nother, you know, um, um, a business opportunity. There are people that are in the food industry and there are people that are in the, like it just goes on clothing line industry. There are people, there's so many different aspects. So just don't lose sight. There's opportunities. It's just you deciding what you love to do. And I say, when you find what you love to do, then the money will follow. Yeah, the and and, follow. And, all, and something that I've learned since we started having these guests is that you don't have to jump all the way in and leave everything behind as an entrepreneur. You can still be an employee, you know, save yourself a lot of money on benefits, especially if you have kids. We, we have a regular guest that has created a hairline, a uh, natural hair product that has gone nationwide. And she's on walmart.com, uh, the hair luxury company here in Jackson. But she's still a full-time biology professor because, one, she likes her job, but, two, she wants to keep those state benefits for the state of Mississippi. And if the company did go belly up, she would have that stable income. So I think um, that's a big misconception is being an entrepreneur doesn't mean you just jump all in and you don't do anything else. Now, if you have the money to do that, sure, that's fine. But that is so rare uh, in, the, in, in modern times that it's almost unheard of. It is. And I say to you that Greg is like 100 percent on, you know, the way to be build wealth, especially generational wealth is having multiple streams of income. So if you can work at the same time, it's not all in or nothing. You sometimes have to do. I have a good friend of mine. She is now sits on the board for Salesforce.com. And she used to tell me all the time, sometimes you have to do what you got to do until you can do what you want to do. And so there's sacrifices that we have to make along the way to get to our desired North Star. Don't be afraid to make sacrifices. Don't be afraid to work while you're pursuing your goal. Just don't lose sight of where it is that you're aiming. Don't allow life to come in and stop you along your life journey. Don't let circumstances stop you. Know that things are going to get in the way. Life in general is going to get in the way. Just assume that. Just put that there. Just, just know that. And as it does, it's not necessarily necessarily something that's to set you back. It might be to set you up. Maybe there's a lesson for you to learn. Always look for the lesson. Don't take it personal when life hits you. When life hits you, look at it as what do I need to learn from this so that I can be better? Use it as a stepping stone. Everything is a stepping stone. It's a seed to set you up for something greater. Know that. Just go into life knowing that whatever's coming at you is only going to make you bit better. It's only going to make you better. It's only going to make you better. Yeah. Uh, and now before I get to the students' questions, one thing uh, I do want to talk about, and this class does a pretty good job of this, but I just want it to be, to be heard from a professional, is that this, this generation is just so stuck in their phone. Uh, and, and, you know, and I'm a big technology person too, but the skill that's being lost that sets the great entrepreneurs apart are those communication skills. Being able to sell, and, you, and, you know, you have a background in sales. Some of these students want to get so mad that we make them present in front of 10 kids. Um, and it's not to be mean, but it's to drive that force to be able to have that sales pitch. What sets apart the great entrepreneurs, you could have the best product in the world, but if you can't sell it and you can't show that it's the best, you're not going to be able to make any money because products do not sell themselves. Companies sell themselves. Yes. Um, well, one of the things that we, we know sales one-on-one is people don't buy products. People buy from people. 
So people are buying into you and you have to be able to articulate and you have to do it in a nice way and a nice demeanor that people want to do business with you. The internet is getting so competitive that why, why do they want to buy your product? You have to make sure that you're differentiating yourself. And one of the things that Greg talked about is the cell phones is I want to say that it's all great technology and I love it. But one of the things I find is that it can engulf us into living in other people's fantasies and not living in living our own lives. So don't allow it to manipulate you. It's it's that's what it's designed to do. Let's be really clear. You have to understand you have to understand the beast that you're dealing with. So there's a reason why things are the way. Always be inquisitive as to why. Don't always look at face value for anything. Always be that person who's inquisitive to want to understand. If you understand about TikTok and you guys love TikTok, then you have to understand what TikTok does. Do you know that you're signing over your life when you sign on to TikTok? Do you know they're watching your every step because they're studying you and how to sell to you? See, TikTok, TikTok took the message and they know about the business of TikTok, not just the entertainment of TikTok. You have to be a business person. You have to understand what's the business behind it. How do I make money behind it? And it's not just by being on it that's going to make you the money. And Greg just said that. It's you and your understanding of how you're using it and how it applies to the other people. You want them to be, you want to be manipulating that, not being manipulated, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and a good example I heard one time on a TV show was if a, a nuclear scientist was playing uh, a promoter in a game of chess. The scientist might win the game, but the promoter is going to own all the board, all the pieces, and have a million dollars in ticket sales. You tell me who's smarter. I think you know what, Greg. You just, you just, you just nailed that. <laughs> you just nailed that. Yes, you have to pay attention. Look at people like the Jay Zs of the world. Why did they pull back and create rock? Up uh, let me not mess up, you know, and I'll, I'll show Look my Rockefeller I'm records. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How did they do that? Because he wanted to own his own rights. He wanted you have to understand the business business of what you're doing, not just the fun of what you're doing. And he understood. If you look at Master P, he said somebody wanted to offer him a million dollars. He didn't take it because he realized that if someone was willing to offer him a million, he was worth 10 million. So he sold his own records. He owned the masters to his music and owning the masters is how you make the money. So you have to understand the business behind why you do what you do, not just doing what you do, which means you have to educate yourself. You have to take out the the time out. So when you're in this class, this class is not to do anything. School is not to do anything. School is an opportunity for you. You got to take advantage of the opportunity to learn and make it apply to what it is that you aspire to do. It's a tool. Use the tools that life gives you. Don't shun them away or make them bad. They're there for a purpose. And if you take advantage of them, they'll work for you. I promise you they will. Sorry, I got buzzed by the office, but I do have this question. I got a few questions yes. I to get to. Um, this first one is Octavia Johnson. She's a senior. And before I get to her question, uh, I think she's got a really cool concept she has an idea for. She wants to be a teacher, but she also has a business concept because she also has an interest, interest in cosmetology, where she wants to set up an online tutoring platform to do black hair for non-black parents. Wow. Wow, that is a wow. That's a yes, girl. Go get it. Yes. And keep me informed on how you're doing. I think that is a game changer. Absolutely. Who's doing it? Exactly. So that's the, that's the concept she's come up with. And, you know, and again, she also wants to be a teacher as well. But she asked, um, what were your secrets to become such a great public speaker? And what was the inspiration that gave you the acronym FIT? So a couple of different things. Um, speaking, um, I've done a lot of work on speaking. Um, I have mentors. If you've never heard of Les Brown, you can Google him. He is a world-renowned motivational speaker. I studied him. Um, I also did things like going to different organizations where I could learn how to speak. Um, and this moment, the name of the organization will come up for me, but it just it escapes me. 
in this particular moment, but they have a lot of speaking forums out there where you can get, I took advantage of classes like Greg is offering where I can get up in front of my classmates and speak. And I think speaking, I don't think you ever get comfortable. They said there's two greatest fears in life, public speaking and dying. So public speaking doesn't necessarily get easy, but you can get better. And what you do is use that as an inspiration when you're talking. So for me, I love to inspire. So I don't really worry about like, if, if I walk into a room, whether it's five people or 20,000 people, I go from where my gift is and my gift is to inspire. As long as I focus on that, then it doesn't, it, the gift will come across. And fit really came to me because of my journey through becoming Miss Olympia. Fit came to me because I had to, I looked and said, what does this mean? It really changed my life. It changed everything about me and how I moved through life. I wish I would have, I, you know, lessons come when they, where they're supposed to, not necessarily when you want them to. It came to me at 55. I wish I would have had it when I was 20. I had, I had the makings of it, but didn't know that that it's what it was until 55. But I've always had faith, the ability to believe in the impossible um, and intuition, learning how to trust myself. I meditate and pray daily. And tenacity is the willpower to get up when nobody's telling you to get up. The willpower to go seek people out when nobody's telling you to go seek people out. The willpower to disassociate with people who are not feeding you spiritually. So when I'm around people that are not feeding me and they're draining me, then I tend to disassociate myself with that energy because everything is energy and it's all energy. And I try to align myself with people who pull out the best of me, always pulling out the best of me. And I want to say to you, I, I applaud you. I applaud you. I'm going to tell you, stick to that dream. I guarantee you, it will bring you wealth and fortune. It's needed. I don't see it anywhere on the internet. I would, I just say, continue, continue. Absolutely. Especially in, in this part of the country, there's more and more interracial adoptions. Uh, there's more and more biracial kids that there is going to be a need for non-black parents to learn how to do uh, black hair. And it's, it, it's just I love it. Either. I love it. And true story. My stepmother is white. And so when I was growing up, I used to back in the day, you guys, this is I'm dating myself. Remember, I'm 61. OK, just remember that. So I went to I want an afro because Michael Jackson, you know, the afro and I couldn't <laughs> get an afro. And so she would help me like putting beer in my hands. It never did work, by the way, but she was really trying to help me. So it definitely it works not only for interracial, but parents that are in interracial marriages that have a daughter like a Cheryl that wants Absolutely. to help her do her hair. So you go, girl. Yeah. And with the change in trends, you know, that's there's going to be a huge market for that. Uh, this question is from Miles Woodard. He's also a senior. Uh, he's interested in the gaming industry. And his concept is to open a gaming studio for black game developers. Oh my God, you know, you are in the right lane and there's so many different companies. Have you asked him, has he ever heard of a company called Niantix? That's one company, but I want to tell you, and no. I mean so heartedly, he does? He said no. No, okay, Niantix, look them up. N-I-A-N-T-I-C, Niantix. Um, I've spoken to them before, but I want to tell you, Gaming is the future. And I think there's so many different aspects and areas that you can branch off into. So I want to encourage you. Absolutely. Yes. And everybody that I know that's in gaming and um, that have taken this on as a career, and these are very young people, I'm not joking. You are making straight out of, I don't want to encourage you because I want you to go to college, okay? But they're making six figures and more. I mean, it is a, it's a high demand. So, and the fact that you want to start your own company and educate others to do the same thing, you're not only impacting yourself, but you're doing something, what I call social impact. That's what my company is all about. It's not just myself, but how can I affect the masses? My goal is to reach 50 million women doing the work that I'm doing. And a part of that is by spreading the word and educating others. And what you're talking about doing is not only getting into the gaming industry, but teaching others. I want to tell you, you're going to be a game changer. It's going to trans. It's going to transcend the world. I promise you that. I promise you, it's the future. Uh, but his question is: Have you ever faced any challenging clients that you just could not help? Yes, um, and I'll tell you 
The very interesting thing that I find is that people want change, but they don't want to change. People want change, but they don't want to change. They don't there want to do go. the work. There you so go. I can give you all the tools in the world, but if you don't want to do the work and you want it to come to you and you feel like you're owed something, like the world owes you something, you'll be in a mindset of not growth. If you're not coachable, a lot of people are not coachable. They're not willing to listen. They know everything. They got it all figured out and it's their way or the highway. And I want to say in life, that your road will be a lot harder when you come from that perspective. I'm not saying that you have to stop being who you are. You should always stay true to yourself, but you have to be willing to take direction from those who have been there before. And so in my line of work, because I'm all about mental fitness, it's amazing to me. I can tell you, people come to me all the time and say, Cheryl, give me your diet. I want to know what you eat. Oh, Cheryl, give me your workout plan. Now, mind you, I have to pay a lot of money for this. And I can promise you, I, every time I've ever given it away, just give, here goes my workout plan. Here goes my meal plan. They never follow it. If you don't do the work, you won't get the results. So go. unfortunately, and I do say, unfortunately, there are a lot, but that's why my goal is to hit 50 million because I want to impact those who are ready. I work with people who are ready. And if I find that you're not coachable energetically, I just move on because here goes the thing. People will invest in you when you're willing to invest in yourself. There you go. When Thanks. you're not willing to invest in yourself, then why am I going to take my energy to convince you when you won't even take the energy to convince yourself? You have to be in this game to win it. Are you in it to win it? Or are you in it to talk about how bad life is or how life has done you wrong or you don't understand what I'm going through? I'm going to tell you this. Nobody has it easy. Some people might have it better than others. Granted, you know, there, there's no there's no um, hidden formulas to this life. I said earlier, life is hard, but you have to decide for yourself. I'm going to in this life. I'm going to make an impact. In this life, I'm not going to be a statistic. In this life, I'm going to make a difference. When you start thinking and speaking that, I guarantee you your life will change. And for those who are not willing to think it or speak it, I don't have an antidote in the word that, world that I could give you. I agree. Because I can't give you something that you're willing not. You know, I told my friend the other day, you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. You have to decide, do you want to drink? Do you want it? And if you want it, I can show you how to get it. Love it. All right, I just got one more from the students. This is a Marion Bolden. He's also a senior. Uh, he's interested in the trucking industry, um, but he has the right mindset. He knows he can't just run into it. He wants to get a CDL, get some experience, learn the business, save money, and start investing in multiple vehicles to start to start a transport business, uh, which in this part of Mississippi is very lucrative. Um, so that's what he's really interested in. Uh, and he asked, have you ever found someone who thought they knew more than you and how did you help them? Um, yes, I meet people all the time. I admire people who know more than me. I don't never want to be the smartest person in the room. They say when you're the smartest person in the room, you need to change rooms <laughs> because you need to be <laughs> people huh? who can inspire you, who I can learn from and who I can grow from. I think that in this life we live, just like I'm 61 years old, there's so much that I can teach you. But I think that there's things you could teach me too. And so I'm, I am open and this goes back to, are you coachable? You have to be willing to be open. And I've met people and how do I pour into them? Because I know my value. I don't, I'm not trying to be you. My grandmother used to tell me, I can't be you and you can't be me. So I don't walk in a room trying to be a copy of anybody else. I show up as my most authentic self. That's why you're getting me right now. Cause what you're getting is Cheryl Grant. I'm not showing up. I can't be Beyonce. I love Beyonce. I use her name a lot. I love Beyonce, but I can't be Beyonce. There's only one Beyonce. God created her. My name is Cheryl Grant, but I can be the best Cheryl Grant that I can be. And for those that who know more than me, if they come from the mindset that they know more from me and they can't learn from me, then it goes back to the question before. There's nothing I can do with that individual. And I don't try to plant seeds where they're not going to grow. So I don't take my energy and exert it trying to convince somebody of something that they already know. But if they know more than me and they're willing to learn from me too, then that's an equal yoke. That's an equal yoke where we can learn from each other. I'm all 
all about collaboration. And in life, you have to be in collaboration. Remember, I talked about communication creates connection. Connection creates collaboration. Collaboration creates community. I always want to be in collaboration. I always want to be where we're taking and we're giving because that's the dance of life, right? You take and you give. Whenever you become stance, they say like a stick. If you're not flexible, if you bend that stick, what's going to do? It's going to break. And I'm not trying to break. I'm trying to be flexible. And I like to create that flexibility with everybody whom I'm coaching. And about that trucking business, it is one of the number one industries out there. That's how we all are surviving. So my brother also is in the trucking business and he hauls um, water and concrete and he has his own company and he's doing very well. And he started first renting a truck to buying a truck so now he has four or five. So it is possible. It is doable. It goes back to the race is not given to the swiftest. There it's given go. to the one who's most consistent. Don't lose your way and be around people who is who are in the business that you can learn from. And when you re meet somebody who knows more than you and they're not willing to collaborate, don't discredit them. Just move on to the next one. Yeah. Move on to the next one. Never burn a bridge. Remember, I said that you might need to cross it in that truck. Yeah, and and he and like I said, he's got the right mindset to get started in it. He knows he's not just going to jump into it and just swimming in money. He's willing to put in the work, and I think he's willing to learn the business, and he'll do well. So, um, but we're, we're almost out of time, and I mean, and I just learned something new every time you talk, and we just thank you so much for for taking some time for us today. But before we go, you know, we're a rural, all black community here in middle of nowhere, Mississippi. But you said yourself, it doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter who your parents are. It doesn't matter what talents you have. The fit mindset is what changes. And betting on yourself is what changes your situation. So what can these young people do now to start getting in that mindset and to be just as successful as people like you? So first of all, I want to tell you this, is that because of technology, you can learn from anywhere. So rather than watching videos that are necessarily entertainment, use social media to your advantage to learn something. Keep your mind nourished. You want to make sure instead of listening to the news or listening to, I'm not saying nothing wrong with rap. I love rap or music of that nature, or even, you know, um, just being engulfed in Instagram, really start to get on Google and educate. You get on TikTok and educate yourself for what you're passionate about. Become an expert in the field that you want to be an entrepreneur in and constantly feed yourself. I'm going to tell you my habits are I get up every day with prayer and meditation because for me, being connected to a greater source other than myself is what helps to keep me grounded. Secondly, in terms of my intuition, I meditate and that meditation is just really becoming at one with the universe about what is that I want to attract and not necessarily going after things, but learning how to attract things. And then tenacity, that's the work, getting online, listening to podcasts, um, joining, follow me, listen to me, um, getting mentors, people that can pour into you, people that will help you lead the way, find people who are doing the very thing that you want to do. And even if it's on IG, if you see somebody reach out, let them know you're young and you're just want to find out how you can continue to grow as an individual. Your mindset is everything. Your mindset is everything. So how you think will produce the words you speak, which will produce the character that you build. And that character will lead you to your destination. I promise. Absolutely. Wow. Um, just unbelievable. And again, we, we just thank you so much for all the knowledge and a great Instagram follow Cheryl Grant at uh, Instagram, Cheryl Grant.com. Uh, Cheryl, yes. uh, all their information, Cheryl Grant International, as well as her Instagram information is on there. And keep me apprised of how you're doing. I want to know how you're doing. Yeah, Please. I mean, yeah. That's not some great concepts coming from high school students. So it's just really yes. cool that they're thinking about this. And even if they want to be employees, this is still things they can do uh, to have the entrepreneurial mindset because um, it's, there's going to be a need for it. We need more black business owners. We need more female business owners. So the representation across that matters everywhere. But yeah, again, Cheryl Grant, all the way from Oakland, California. We thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, I will Have talk a great to you. day. See ya.